being out till about 3.30 in the morning, sunrise comes a little bit too early. But we still have to get grub and hit a car museum before we head out of town. So, we gotta hit the road. Turn that thing off, I can't handle cameras. You're gonna have to leave now. And if you think I'm having a hard time getting out the door, Wilcox has already misfired once. Now he's going on twice. Can we go for three? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. We are temporarily leaving the Wedgwood to go to breakfast at a place called the Cookie Jar, and we are swimming in profundity. What do you feel like having for breakfast? Uh, I'm thinking cookies. Cookies? Actually, would be pretty good. It's the Cookie Jar, right? Isn't that what they're known for? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, I have to admit, I'm not a big sweet tooth in the morning. I like the salty, fatty, hash brownie type stuff. But after seeing what's in this case, I'm almost going to change my mind. That is until I see what's on the menu. Hi. Good morning. Welcome to the cookie jar. Hi. Good morning. Welcome to the cookie jar. <laughs> the menu's very Americana. And come to think of it, the people that are eating there are pretty much Americana too. Country fried steak, prime rib, seasoned, breaded, and grilled by our chef, served with two large eggs, potatoes covered with sausage gravy. Help. So what was the side that you just had added to your breakfast? I had thick cut bacon added to my sausage biscuits and gravy on the side, and some other meat hopefully will come with it as well. That's not a reference to Elma. At this point, cookies are the farthest thing from my mind, and obviously they're far from Wilcox's too. What do you think? I gotta, I hate to say this, I gotta try your meat. <laughs> Look at that thing, I mean, that's crazy, right? Does, does he never stop? He never stops, he never <laughs> stops. i serious though. Look, I mean, that's like, That is incredible. What is that? That's, that's gonna be a heart attack on the way to barrel. When Wilcox heads off to the bathroom, I try to get some action shots that fail kind of miserably. Wilcox went to the bathroom like 10 minutes ago. I'm going to call out the National Guard. Getting ready to call out the National Guard. Hey, you know, you got to check out the bathroom. I was doing some filming in there. They're all... I'm sorry, doing some filming? Three signs on the inside of the bathroom door that give you explicit instructions uh -oh. on how to handle the facilities. I suggest you go check it out. Okay. I have to admit, this is the first time I saw a plant in a stall, and Wilcox was right. Is it a good sign when you have these signs on the inside of a bathroom door? There's a three-step discussion about what to do during a long visit. Here's my favorite part. And now that our food is behind us, Wilcox gives a review. What were your thoughts on breakfast? Breakfast was awesome. As a matter of fact, that was the first time in my life I've ever ordered biscuits and gravy at a restaurant. And uh, I'm going to tell you this, it won't be my last. It was He's not human, folks. <laughs> It was uh, large and in charge would be the way I would phrase that. Outstanding. After breakfast, it was time to go back to the Wedgwood. We'd heard they had a car museum there, but this caught us off guard. We're here. I figured we were going to step into a small building with five or ten cars, but instead, we stepped back into time. These antiques were in pristine condition, with cars from the brass era to the nickel era. And of course, you gotta have the classics. And what could be more classic than the fashions of the time? These are prominently displayed throughout the museum. Yeah, you come to Fairbanks, you're gonna have to check this place out, because I mean, it is amazing, both agreeing that this is like one of the best uh, displays we've ever seen of anything in Alaska. If you take a look, it is so authentic, and so many cars from every era, it goes way back to the early 1900s. This is amazing. America's first mass-produced Front-wheel drive car. Some say this is the most beautiful dashboard ever made. Not too far off base. But true antique auto aficionados are traveling from all over the world to get a glimpse at their car in the preservation class. This is a 1910 Hudson. Notice the horsepower. What was it? 20. 20 horsepower. <laughs> Everything on this is original. This is the real thing, folks all the way down to the fenders and the rust. Incredible. 
And just when we thought we'd seen everything, we caught eye of the Alaskan automobiles. This is history here. We gotta check this out. These are actual antique autos that resided in Alaska. This is a Model T Snow Flyer. It has chains and, a, and skis on it, and it was $325 for the chassis, $395 for the snowmobile conversion software. What a lovely day for a drive. That's when we spotted the ultimate kid, or kid at heart, accessory to the museum. Wow, wow. You can become part of the museum. Hi, can I get in your automobile? That's my dish, baby. Mm. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. I feel like going for a drive. Hmm, what should I do? Excuse me, miss. Yes. Do you have any cigarettes? Mmm. All right, playtime is over. We have to get to one of those newfangled airports, and we have a much more modern car to climb into to get us there. But that's a little bit easier said than done. We've just pulled into a gas station to fill up our rental car, top it off before we return it. And meteorologist Scott Ellis from Channel 2 cannot figure out how to open the gas tank. Help We've me. been sitting here for about a minute and a half, pushing two minutes. Literally trying to figure out how to open up the gas tank. I can predict a thunderstorm, but I can't open a gas tank. So many buttons and knobs and wheels. These newfangled instruments known as the automobile. How do we do it? <laughs> you take a look. You take a look. Insanity. I wish I were making it up, but we're actually going into the manual in the glove compartment to uh, figure out how to open up the gas tank. <laughs> Alright, I'd like to point out that while we are both morons, it was covered up by the floor mat. No fuel levers whatsoever. Aha! Just a shade under 10 minutes. That's not bad. All right, see you in Barrow. That's right, we're heading off to Barrow, and actually we're taking Jackie with us. That's in part three. Also in part three, Wilcox and I unable to start part three. Oh, uh, when we first announced a blog contest winner. <laughs> when we first... <laughs> it's a serious day. <laughs> <laughs> mm.